thank you so much once again for sticking to Y254 TV. You are watching the Power Talk Show and I am Sherry Blessing. I am joined here by Faith and Abdul and we're having a conversation on how you can diversify your professional skills, particularly in this day and time. And as we continue with this conversation, I want to engage with you so you can go on our platforms at Y254 and let me know how do you think the youth can generate multiple streams of income? Because we keep talking about all the ways that money is scarce and jobs are scarce but I want to find out how can you with the skills that you have currently generate multiple streams of income is it even possible to do that go on our platforms at y254 and let me know that and as we were conversing before we took our short break we have realized that it's very important for you to have multiple skills to stay relevant one and you have to learn them actively because faith you were saying that you yourself once you get a new client you have to go and dive into that field and figure that out so i'm wondering how do you balance that because i know the jobs that you're doing, you're a marketing strategist and you're in, an event planner. First, those are stressful. You have to deal with people, you have to organize all these things. So I'm wondering, how do you balance learning new skills, doing your job and your personal life? So how do you make time to, to learn these new skills? Uh, let me first by confessing, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. It took me a while. So you have to actually integrate it into your daily life. And in a way that does not seem like you're going out of your way. Uh, so for example, um, I'm born again. So I'll wake up, I do my morning devotion. So, and then I'll be like, okay, so let me do this. Then I learn, or I'll just integrate it in like, uh, probably I'm working and then I'll just put something on and I'm learning. Like I'm just very intentional about it. Yeah. So you have to integrate it somewhere where it infuses with your day-to-day -day activities and it does not feel like it's a stretch because when when it feels like whew, it's a struggle then it becomes a burden and you're not wa going to want to do it and they'll be like you know yeah. it's a must i do this so just infuse it in your daily routine somewhere where you're just like this is this is lunch time i can be eating lunch and reading a book yeah i can be eating lunch and listening to a youtube video uh, I can be eating lunch, so doing multitasking, then prioritize yourself. So for me, like when it's weekend, it's weekend. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what work is. I don't know what you studying check is. Hours. I don't. Unless I'm organizing an event, weekend is weekend. Yeah. So and I'm very intentional about that because if you're not intentional about it, it's gonna be overwhelming and your body is going to break. And who are you if you don't take care of yourself? So yeah. very, be very intentional about all this time about planning. See how you can integrate it and also be very intentional about taking care of yourself. I like that because yeah. so many people have not even mastered the work-life balance. I'm going to confess, I'm one of those people because mm. I'll take work home with me and then it's going to be the middle of the night and I'm like, oh God, I haven't slept. I need to get up tomorrow. I have to do this, this and that. And it can get overwhelming. So you have to be intentional about creating time for learning new skills, for doing your work and for rest as well because that's very important. Yeah. And you've just mentioned YouTube being one of the platforms which you can learn. And YouTube University has saved a lot of us. I'm sure even you back home, you can attest to going on YouTube and learning a new skill. But where else can we learn new skills? Because where else, Abdul, you've just mentioned that you do music production, you do yeah. 3D animations, you also do scripting. Yeah. Where do you learn the skills from? If I want to be a 3D animator, yeah. how can I start? You, uh, well, YouTube is the easiest answer. For <laughs> <laughs> and there are actually channels that have guided learning on YouTube. It's not like you want to Google something and then you're not guided through the process. But uh, other places you can find like, uh, you can find Skillshare, you can pay to join people's Discord channels. You can go to, um, there are various clubs. And when you want to do script writing for film, you can join something like Stage 32 for filmmakers. And that's like everyone who's there in the film industry, directors, actors, script writers, anyone who's there, camera operators, now other technical operators are in, on Stage 32. You can learn from them personally through what they've written, through articles as well. Also, you know, like, uh, in as much as we have YouTube, they teach you practical skills. Yeah. You would have also textual knowledge coming from sites that are dedicated to such things. Yeah. People who went to school and they're passionate about teaching uh, the skills that they've had. And most of them teach for, for free if you're looking on YouTube. If you join Skillshare, of course, you've got to 
You've got okay. to just, you've got to pay for that. <coughs> yeah. If you're on Mind Valley, you have to pay. If you're on Stage 32, uh, Coursera, you have to pay Alison as well. But then they're very affordable and they're very, very, I would say, time friendly. You don't have to say that I'm following a particular schedule. And I like the answer that you gave earlier when you say that you have to integrate learning in your skill in your life. For me, if something is a must for me to do, I wouldn't do it. Mm. And I learned from a psychologist also that I was watching online who said that human beings don't like to do things that they've been instructed to do. Yeah. And even if you're the one who's instructed yourself to do something, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. So you have to <coughs> find a way in which that this thing that you're learning just naturally fits into your life. So you wake up in the morning, um, you do whatever you do, like whatever your morning routine is. Mm. Um, and after you're done with your morning routine, your curiosity, for me, I'm a bit spontaneous. My curiosity is what will drive me. I'll be like, I'm not looking to learn something from scratch. For instance, I, I'm self-taught in music production and I didn't go into music class and start learning uh, music theory and scales and all those things. But I just sat down and said, you know what? I have a piano software on my, f on my phone. Let me start make something and, and, and let me see what it's going to turn out like. And when I'm stuck, that's when I ask a question online or whoever I find that understands what I'm doing. So it's very spontaneous. So I would say that my learning is a bit different. I learn while I'm doing what I'm trying to get a new skill. Yeah. yeah. Can I add I like something that. to that? Yeah, yes, yes, please. Uh, so the other way you can also learn is, for example, you two are presenters, right? Mm. So I can just have coffee with you guys and sit and learn about your industry yeah. Yeah. from your experience because mm. there's textbook and there's experience. Yeah. So if you want to learn, let's say, a skill like uh, photography, shadow photographer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like you don't, it doesn't have to be like where you're sitting down and whatever. Yeah. Uh, if you want to learn cooking, go to a restaurant, shadow a chef, you know. Yeah. So you can actually learn the actual skills because I find that better than just reading because now the practical aspect now is very, very different. But I see manga quite groundly different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite groundly different. Quite groundly no. different. <laughs> and I think every professional can attest to that. Yeah. You yeah. learn yeah. something in class and then you get to your field and you have to learn all over again. Yeah. I like that both of you are agreeing <laughs> that you have to invest time, yeah. money, energy into learning these new skills. Mm. But now I have the skills. How can I monetize them? Is it because we're talking about creating multiple streams of income? So let's say I'm fully employed, take a nine to five. Then is it possible for me to create time to freelance? So how can I fit freelancing into my schedule mm -hmm. such that I also am applying these other skills? Maybe not in my current job, but in other jobs or maybe creating a client base or coming up with a whole new field that I am an expert in. How can I do that? Mm -hmm. uh, let me start with you, Faith. Um, I'll say when it comes to <laughs> another job is, get something you really love that does not seem like a like work because yeah. now you have a nine to five mm -hmm. is this other one start feeling feels feeling like work then you're gonna be like you're gonna drop it so find first something that you're very passionate about for example you're a tv presenter and you love to cook start there make muffins bring them to the office sell them at 20 bob. You're setting something small, right? But let it not ever feel like it's work. It's something like, for example, you're relieving stress, you get. So you come to, you, you come out of work nine to five, then you go to your kitchen and you bake. And then you take this muffin tomorrow morning, bring them to the office and sell to your colleagues. That's a side hustle. Uh, for example, you just love reading books, right? So read books and then like, yo, uh, so, I can tell you about this book. It will help your life. All you have to give me is like 500 bob. And I tell you, because you want the knowledge, right? Yeah. So find creative ways on how to implement it. Let it never feel like work. Uh, for example, you love planning events. Start by planning birthdays. You know, like you're doing birthdays, take photos, do something you start to love, and then you'll find that it will grow and grow. And uh, you can even take what you learn and TikTok nowadays, I love that there's social media and you can earn from it, right? Take your camera, just teach people your skills and be like, yo, so to don't tell you about ABCD, how to get this. And you can monetize that. You can start even master classes during your free time. You can you can even train people. For example, my side hustle is I train people on social media. And it's not my nine to five, so I will be like, it's one hour a day and I, I can handle two students max. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's what I can handle because I can't fall full. <laughs> yeah, the class is full. That's good. Even one, the better, right? Yeah. So just find a way in how you, you enjoy it and does not feel like work. I love that because yeah. that's very, very practical. Yeah. It's your passion and you've integrated it to a new skill. Mm. And that, that goes back to what Abdul was saying. Yeah. Some of your hobbies can be the skills that you can nurture mm. and get better at. Because you discover that so many people are stuck in jobs that they're not really happy doing and they're not happy going to the office every day. They feel so much uh, fatigue and exhaustion just dealing with that. So how then can you also, in case you want to break free from a situation, let's say I'm stuck in a nine to five that I have to do because yeah. it, it brings some money mm -hmm. and I want to break free from this and be an entrepreneur, be a freelancer, do something that I actually love. How can you make steps and actively work towards that? So when it comes to the nine to five job, people always think that you're busy from morning to evening. But truth of the matter is that mm -hmm. you don't spend all that time at work. You yeah. might be sitting at your desk, but you're not working. And your employer might pass, your supervisor might pass, and they'll be like, good worker. But the output <laughs> is not really as much as, as people would expect on 9 to 5. So spend you know, as much time as you're not doing on your work trying to come up with a project. For instance, when you want to get into film, I'll say that one of the ways to monetize your skills is to capitalize on your, on your downtime and also capitalize on what people call free time, which is not actually free. So you could be sitting on your desk on a nine to five job and you've probably finished your assignment, then get down to writing a script. Write about 10, 15 pages or as much as you can in that time that you're free. Then when you go to lunch, allow yourself to rest for a little bit because your mind is gonna burn out. Then you come back, continue with it. Before you leave at five, you're not just satisfied by your job, but you're fulfilled as a person. Then take an annual leave go and shoot a film, okay? Audition some people over the weekend, take leave and go and shoot a film. Uh, if you're doing music, I've got a friend of mine, I'm going to give one of his secrets away. Of course, he's not gonna catch me. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. He's not, no, he's not, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he does music and just in a very, very interesting way. People think that you've got to get into the mainstream music industry, sing, perform somewhere, do all the heavy lifting and get into the, musical, uh, t into the music business. But the way he does it is very different. He sells lyrics, he sells songs to overseas musicians who pay him. And you mm. might not know him, you might never have heard about him, but the way he does it, he writes his own projects and he finishes them, but he also sells his music to other people who perform it in places where he might never go to or he might never have gone to before. And he earns from that that way. So I'll say that if you want to monetize your skills, you've got to find a way out. You're stuck in this place where you might have learned so many skills, but you don't know how to use them. And someone might ask you, why are you studying social media? I see perhaps you're a fashionista or or some industry that doesn't require you to have an understanding of social media and how AI works or anything. And they're like, why are you studying this? Is it gonna earn you anything? Naysayers will tell you that you're not gonna make money, you're just wasting yourself. But when you sit down and you find all those pockets of time within your nine to five where you're not doing anything, then that's the best way, the best way to start and do something like a project that's gonna work out for you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I like that you said that because the truth is, for real, nine to five, most of the time you're just chatting, mm. you're gossiping, you know, you may be on social media, just scrolling through social media. Yeah, yeah. And even in our free time, we do a lot of that. We're just surfing the web, mm. not being intentional, not actually learning something. Yeah. And one thing I've come to realize about even successful people, even when they're on social media, they'll follow productive pages that teach them about mm. a new skill, that teach them about a new topic, a new subject. People don't like to learn that, yeah. and especially in this day and time with our attention span being very, very uh, slow. And one thing that you've mentioned, Faith, is you have a routine that you're very rigid about. How can you create a routine and stick to it and be very intentional? Because sometimes people start one, two, three days, by the fourth day you've forgotten, you've lapsed back. So how can you be intentional and actually create a routine that you've said, one hour daily I'm going to improve, one hour I'm going to read a book, for one hour I'm going to work out, do this and that. How can you do that intentionally? Um, don't be rigid, let's start there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't be rigid, we're not robots. Mm. Um, allow yourself to fail. Allow yourself once now to be like, but they don't feel like it. Um, somebody once told me, 
progress, not perfection. So, for example, you said, I'm going to paint my house, right? That's a project. Yeah. Uh, and then you say, okay, so, right, break down a list of everything you need to do from I need first to get the money, I need to go buy paint, I need to now buy the brushes, I need to move the couches or cover them, and then I need now to start painting. You get, I'll start with this wall, this wall, this wall. So when you break it down like that, it does not look like a huge task looks like small small tasks that you have to accomplish so yeah. we psychologically we love it when we have done something good so you say i've gotten the money take so you're happy you get oh yeah. the project is getting started uh oh i have bought the paint tick so even when you're feeling like oh my goodness i've not painted my house you have done things so you need to go back to that and be like okay you said you're gonna read let's say one book every month start by buying the book you have bought the book start by chapter one start by one verse start by you know just break it down into very small tiny achievable goals so that it does not feel like it's this whole massive thing that you have to do and we don't do it you feel very bad and the thing is you're not gonna want to do it again yeah. Yeah. So break it down into very manageable, achievable tasks as minute as possible and make sure now you're progressing and progressing. So when you come back and you look at it, you're like, I have accomplished three out of five. Yeah. Go me, you know, and then it motivates you. That's where you get self-motivation, motivated now to do it. And then once you continue doing it and repeating and repeating, that becomes a habit. Does that, does it also help with procrastination? Because I know so many yeah. people, you know, sometimes we talk about, right now we're getting to the end of the year. There are yeah. goals that we set at the beginning of the year. <laughs> so because we keep procrastinating and saying next month I'll do this, next week I'll do this, we just fight so when you break it down to mm -hmm. small tasks does that also help yeah also like you see uh when you're starting the year we're normally very ambitious we're like i'm gonna travel to five countries have you traveled before <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to start going to the gym every day. Have you been going to the gym ever? So we are very ambitious when it comes to goal setting. What we need to do is we need to be real with ourselves. Look in the mirror and be like, what do I really want? Like literally, is it just going for a 10 minute walk? That's exercise. Like start there. Like what do I really, really need? Don't be like, oh, because everybody's like, oh, I'm going to buy a car. Have you been saving for it? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do this. You have to be very real and very practical. So when you when you bring when you now set ambitious goals, is then now when you don't do them, when it's December, you're like, what have I been doing with my life? Yeah. You know. But when you're very real, real, real with yourself, when you look now at the goals you had set, you're like, I'm very impressed with myself you know yeah. and you find that you've achieved and you know our minds are wired like that you're gonna look at it and be like i've achieved zero and you're gonna feel very very bad about yourself yeah but if you look at it and you're very real and very practical with your goals then you're gonna look at your practice your your goal list and you're gonna like i've achieved seven out of ten go me you know is yeah. it eating right you know you're just able to be real with yourself and set very achievable goals it yeah. helps. I would like to add something onto that. Please. Uh, and also, yeah. let, me, let me also just give us practical ways of how you yourself deal with procrastination mm. and how the skills also help you become resilient so that when you're learning another new skill, yeah. you're more resilient towards that. Okay, so I'll start by adding on to what Faith has just said. Uh, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Don't look at, I want to be at the top of the mountain. And you're like, that's how many thousand meters up? And you've not even made the first step. Mm. So it's about, firstly, how many steps upwards have you made? How have you made it? How have you felt about achieving that little feat that someone else might be like, that compared to what you've done is not really significant. So it's about the steps, the experience as you move forward. It motivates you. You can even move faster when you're concentrating on where you are than looking at how far you, you are from getting to your goal. Uh, I will also say that for me when it comes to like achieving something, you, you set a target and many people like to say, I want to set a target that next year I want to do something. But by the end of that year, by December, if you've not done it, 
I'll not blame you and say that you were too lazy or you procrastinated. I will say it wasn't just important to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you didn't That's even true. achieve it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. cannot say that I want to go to the gym and you've not even lifted five kilos by December and then you say, I'll try next year. Yeah. I'll say, leave that one alone. It wasn't important to so you. So how then do you, how do you make goals or how do you set targets realistically, depending on your lifestyle, depending on what you, you want to achieve, maybe your 10-year plan. Yeah. How do you do that in a realistic manner? It, to be very realistic, uh, when I had a challenge and I said to myself that I need to choose one skill that I need to focus on and perfect it, I realized that looking at all of them put together, how do I summarize myself in one word and still make sense while having encompassed all of these talents? And I just came up with one word, creative. So if you're creative, then you can be musically creative, artistically creative, you can be intellectually creative, or even academically creative. So it has to be part of you for you to actually even achieve it in the first place. So when it comes to setting uh, practical steps or, or projects that you want to achieve, then you don't want to say that you want to buy a car if you're not interested in buying a car. You have to firstly, do you like cars? Or is there something that you do that's not directly connected to cars, but it's something that can somehow trickle into into the cars that you wanted you want to buy or something like that. I'll give you an example of I started with visual arts that was with fine arts when I was drawing as a kid. And when you get into 3D modeling and animation, there are different things. You use different tools, but the same skills or the same senses that you use are the ones that connect to the 3D modeling and animation or mm. the same kind of logic that you would use in making a an animation or an image is the same kind of skills or common sense that you would use when you're coming up with a musical piece. So basically they all ha have to be connected in some sort of way. So the answer is within yourself. Yeah. It's not something that you need to Google so that you say, how do I become a better person? And you say, I need to get a new skill that you've never been interested in. So it has to be part of you. For so you, you have to be very realistic. It has to come from within. Yeah. You have to know yourself yeah. for you to want skills that mm. align with what you want. Exactly. And basically, from what I'm getting is, it also adds value to your self-development. Exactly. Because Faith, based on what you're talking about with reading books and uh, even Abdul, with this new skills, with every new skill, you, you grow, you change, you develop. Mm. So how, how can you focus on that and focus on so that it, it also motivates you? How can you say, I'm doing this for the betterment of myself? I like the way Abdul, you said, mm. your 18-year-old self will look at you now and then be so proud. Yeah. So how can you gauge mm. that faith such that if there's someone who wants to learn a new skill but they're so overwhelmed by everything, how can they focus on the positive and the, the benefits that it's going to have on their self-growth? I think we're going to repeat this a lot, but be very honest. Be very honest. Mm. I, if it's not a pain point in your life, it's not going to matter. And you're, you're gonna be v it, it's going to be very easy for you to let it go. For example, right now, the pain point in my life is to lose weight. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, so I have to figure a way of... So let me give you a practical example. I want to lose weight. So first of all, the first thing I went was like, how much do I weigh? Check. How much do I want to be? check did a lot of research what do i need to do i was like check check sometimes i work out sometimes i'm too lazy to work out i don't beat myself up right but i'm like okay so today i didn't do it uh today I didn't work out why probably i worked late so i woke up very late also uh and then by the time i was working out i was like and then i asked myself who said you can only work out in the morning and the evening like nobody so you have to be very and then Make it work for you. Make it work with your schedule. Do not, I know people fancy going to the gym like at 5 a.m. What, what if I'm not a morning person, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. There's lunchtime. There's 11 a.m. If it suits you, do it at that time. Yeah. Do, do not, do not, I normally say, be unique. Don't follow the masses. If it works for them, good for them. Mm. You know, I'm actually pretty unique if I work out at 11 a.m. Who has ever worked yeah, at 11 a.m.? You know? Uh, well, I went at midday. <laughs> <laughs> I was you know? <laughs> yeah, be I unique. Like that. Be unique. Like, like, just make it. And then I was telling myself, 
even smile even like be like oh my god i enjoy this trick your brain to thinking you really love doing this and then you will actually start enjoying it I love like that. yeah like if you if you cannot if you cannot get away from carbs so how many how many how much carbs can i eat or like just be able to reward yourself enjoy it like trick your mind to enjoying it and then you'll start enjoying it and then don't be too hard on yourself you you only have you yeah. imagine you only, the world will beat you and then you beat yourself up come on mm. like love yourself love on yourself when you don't do it be like okay so I said I didn't do it today how can I improve how can I make it better how can I now go to the next steps but it, it really has to be you really have to be really honest yeah. with yourself I love that yeah. it, it comes from within again as we were saying yeah. so Abdul can you give us any parting shots in addition to that maybe briefly under a minute under a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's a task. <laughs> <laughs> we can summarize that in a minute. Please. I'll say that firstly, uh, two points I get from what she said, and I totally agree with. I was actually going to say them before she said that. She said them, so I'll say them in my own words. Yeah. Firstly, you have to forgive yourself for what you've not done. Because if you don't forgive yourself, you can't move forward. You'll keep on looking at what have I not done and what am I not doing? You keep on judging yourself. The next thing I would want to say is that when it comes to new skills or something that you want to get better at and you're somewhere at the bottom, get people who are ahead of you. And people who know something always want to teach something. Yeah. Or someone who's rich will always want to inspire someone else to be rich. They will not look down on you and say, you can't do it. People who criticize you are the ones who they themselves cannot do it. That's so true. that's basically what I would say. Thank you. And finally, just tell me your socials very, very quickly. Where can we find you on social media, Abdul? My name, Abdul Razaki Gutia. What about you, Faith? Faith Morongo. Thank you. So let me sample some of the comments that we have from social media. Our question today is how can the youth generate multiple streams of income? So we have from Facebook, Michu the second says with the system, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we've given you some tips. Julius Morega is tuned in from Yerry Town. O'Brien Du says, tell us how to get capital. Those are very good question which we will tackle in future. Mengich K E is watching from Bar Marigat in Baringo. Kondani Nasisi. Thank you. Dennis uh, Nyongesa is following from Namwesi in Bungoma. Chokorawa Makuini is following from Makuini County. Paradox Shine from Kimilili, well represented. Wamalwa Lawrence is following from, from uh, Lurende in Bungoma. Junior Junior Namewell is from Kisumu. And we have Victor who's tuned in and so many more of you, like Willy Bazu who's uh, tuned in and Abu Jesh. Thank you so much for tuning in. Next time, unfortunately, time was very brief today, but next time we're going to have a conversation on financing, how you can get capital, how you can finance even to, to monetize from learning how to, to get the skills and monetizing your skills afterwards. We will tackle that and so much more, but I hope you've gotten something from this conversation and we will have a repeat of this tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m. It will also be up on YouTube, just in case you've missed anything. We'll be back here next week, same time, every Thursday between 7 and 8 p.m. But for now, good night and I hope you have a lovely night.